I'd like to thank um, Ian and uh, organizers for the opportunity to present our technology. <coughs> and while well, it's a great privilege to follow up all the uh, successful platforms um, presented um, earlier, and we are um, a young biotech company and interested in novel antibody engineering and cell and development technology. And we are located in Sunnyvale, California, in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> and one of our ultimate goal, um, um, actually, is to streamline the antibody discovery and the cell line development into um, create a one-step streamline uh, process. So earlier, um, Dan's talk laid a, a great groundwork um, for for um, the technology we're going to present. And he had a great um, a, a analogy of the silos and using silo re representing different stage of the antibody development. And when you move one silo to another, then you increase the risk. And Adimab um, is able to um, deliver uh, druggable human antibodies from antigen in one process. And we actually want to take one step, one step further. We want to de deliver um, from one uh, from the antigen to actually a production cell lines in you know, one process. And we believe we can achieve it, our, uh, this goal by using the antibody membrane switch technology. So I'm gonna um, uh, divide the talk into um, uh, two parts. So I'll spend most of the time talking about this antibody membrane switch technology. And then I'll uh, briefly introduce our uh, double allele knockout technology. And this DECO is a CRISPR-related um, method, and we're able to generate a pan of a foot A knockout cell cells um, within five weeks. Um, first, um, I would like to share some of uh, our thought about the uh, current antibody development paradigm, which essentially is a two-stage um, process. Use um, identify a therapeutic lead by antibody discovery and engineering and then you move on to per, uh, production cell line development. And some of the uh, limitations of this process, uh, first of all, um, in a lot of programs, uh, antibody discovered or, or the, your therapeutic lead actually is not in the final product format. In most cases, it would be a human IgG. Uh, it may be single chain, uh, fab, or non-human antibodies. And then you have to uh, reformat your lead um, uh, prior to um, the cell line development. And this can sometimes lead to uh, complexities um, in the downstream process. And the other point I want to bring up is the, uh, in most cases, I think the product quality attributes are not assessed in the early stage of cell line development. Um, I'll get to that point um, more in the later slides. And the conventional cell line development um, most likely rely on the gene application. And everybody is familiar with the DHFR and the GS systems. And in a typical campaign, you probably will screen hundreds of clones, and you'll, you'll end up with maybe a dozen highly productive clones. And then a critical uh, assessment is the production stability. When you take off the selection pressure, you probably um, end up with several candidate clones. Then you uh, really um, start a detailed uh, characterization of all the uh, critical product uh, quality attributes. I, I, I list a few of them, uh, sequence heterogeneity, glycosylation, aggregation. So all these uh, heterogeneities um, um, uh, can lead to a complexities in the downstream um, process development. I think up to date, um, therapeutic biologics are accepted as a mixture of a uh, heterogeneous um, uh, species and uh, probably defined as a chromatograph um, um, profile, and I think in the future the industry is going to um, put a higher demand um, to define your therapeutic biologics in a more detailed molecular nature, and I think it's going to um, put higher uh, requirement in the active quality control in the fermentation and um, process development, and also it's going to require um, um, a screening and as an assessment of the product quality attribute in the very early stage of cell line development. <laughs> and the limits of this con conventional approach, um, I think the, the first one um, in our mind is a uh, product quality attributes not uh, assessed in the early stage. And then it takes a relatively long time, six to eight months. Um, and because of the uh, gene application, I think from my personal experience, probably more than half the clones are not stable. If you take off a selection, pre 
selection pressure, and they will lose productivity uh, rapidly. I think probably most of people would prefer a single copy of gene integration, uh, but this would demand a high throughput, a high throughput cell line screening method to isolate this rare event where your gene of interest get incorporated in a favorable uh, chromosome locus. So what's the uh, most efficient screening method? Um, it's probably facts. Uh, it can handle hundreds of millions of cells per day. And however, it does require your uh, proton of interest in this antibody get anchored on cell service uh, for live cell staining. There's a number of uh, examples, successful examples, people have a screened um, membrane anchored library uh, using the facts. And I list uh, three uh, facts based cell line development method um, in this slide. And uh, the first one is a Lanza. Lanza has this um, you know, somewhat uh, crude method to immobilize uh, protein A on the cell surface and then use the protein A to capture secreted antibody. So this um, anchored antibody, this capture antibody can facilitate fact sorting. And Regenera has developed a more sophisticated approach um, uh, utilizing an inducible CD16 on cell surface to capture the antibody. And I think in both um, technologies, um, they face a similar challenge, which is uh, how to suppress the background. And you want to make sure the anchored an antibody on cell surface is not from the neighboring cells. And Genzyme has developed an um, uh, interesting co-expression of a cell surface reporter. In this case, a CD52, a very small protein, um, anchored on cell surface by GPI linker, and get inserted between the promoter and, and the gene of interest. And the CD52 um, uh, uh, here has a very weak expression um, by uh, uh, using a non-ATG initiated codon. And the idea is that this weak uh, press CD52 can serve as a reporter to first facilitate um, fact sorting. So we have taken a different approach. Um, and so we developed this antibody membrane switch. From, from the name you probably can guess, you, we would um, display the antibody on cell service. And this display is actually switchable. And so after facilitating the, the rapid cell line screening by facts, we would actually, the isolate cells, we would eliminate the membrane anchor um, by um, specific DNA recombinants. And then these cells were transformed into production cells um, and for 100% the secreted antibody. And we have used this method um, to develop cell lines and, and we can reduce the time from six to eight months uh, to uh, two to three months. And we're able to generate a large number of uh, um, high producing cells and I, th I think and this would permit early assessment of product quality attributes. So a um, couple of key points of this technology. Uh, first, it's, a, it's a using membrane anchored antibody to facilitate fact sorting. And we also, um, uh, um, by the mechanism of alternative splicing and site specific DNA recombinants, we were able to remove this membrane anchorage from the chromosome after isolating the high production cells. So this slide is just schematic to show how it works. And you, after stable transfection, uh, you have a mixed population of cells with a higher or low expression level of the member antibody. And fact sorting will, will um, uh, isolate um, uh, the high productive cells and then you apply the molecular switch and remove the member anchorage and transform this cell into um, production cells. So how, how do we do it? Um, it is trivial to display antibody on cell service. Um, I think for the um, cell line development, most people would use uh, genomic DNA of the uh, FC regions. And you can easily just fuse a transmembrane domain or a GPI anchor signal sequence, and then you can display antibody on cell service. And so what we did actually is to manipulate this intron three between the CH2 and the CH3 exons. So we were able to uh, insert an extra exon of this CH3, which is fused uh, with a transmembrane domain. And then this cassette is, is uh, flanked by, say, uh, LOXP, or it can, can be any other um, uh, recognition site for the other uh, site specific DNA uh, recombinants, and to facilitate the future removal of this uh, whole cassette. And when you have um, um, transfect this um, heavy chain vector together with light chain to cells, 
and you actually create an alternative splicing event. So the splicing donor um, at the end of the CH2 have uh, two choices to go. If they go uh, to the first splicing acceptor, and then you'll have um, a membrane-anchored antibody. If it goes to the second acceptor, you'll have a secret antibody. So the cells actually have simultaneous um, uh, member expression and secret antibody. And then the membrane-anchored uh, antibody would facilitate effect sorting for the high produ uh, high, highly uh, um, productive cells. And then after you isolate the cells, you want to remove um, this membrane anchorage. You can just simply by supplying the cells with a Cree would remove the sequence between the locks P. So only thing left in the middle of the introns is a, um, um, a remnant locks P site. And these cells would um, produce the, um, um, security antibody 100% of time for um, production purpose. A brief uh, flowchart of our um, cell line development process. So um, obviously you want to clone your antibody into uh, this MS expression vector. After transfection, stable selection, and fact sorting of the high expression of surface antibody cells, and then you apply the expression switch to remove the membrane anchorage, and then uh, you can obtain these cells with high expression of security antibody. It's a very straightforward process. So the first experiment we did um, is to make sure when you have this LOXP in the middle of intron 3, it wouldn't negatively affect um, the expression. And so we used um, Retoxin as our um, model system and uh, construct um, the white, compare the white type heavy chain and also the modified heavy chain with the locks P in the middle of the intron between CH2 and CH3. And after transient transfection in 23 cells, we find there's um, no difference. Uh, we also make, make sure um, the RNA get, uh, messenger RNA get properly processed um, by our tPCR and sequencing. And then we want to see um, uh, if you have this CH3, extra CH3 exon fused with transmembrane domain, you can display your antibody on cell surface. And indeed, um, so this is a, um, a, a 293 cell transfect with a Y type heavy chain. You see um, uh, uh, there's no antibody on the cell surface. And if you transfect cells with um, modified um, heavy chain with extra um, um, CH3 exon, then you get this uh, membrane displayed antibody. And the next uh, we want to demonstrate, if you supply Cre, you can remove this membrane anchorage, uh, anchorage. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can either transfect the cells um, transiently by a Cre expression vector, or you can supply uh, this recombinant CRE in the uh, culture media. So in this particular case, um, we have this cell one number 27 has a very high level of a membrane antibody. So we treat this uh, with one micromolar of this recombinant CRE, and the CRE will go, to, go into the cell and go into the nucleus. And uh, for a couple hours incubation, um, then, and then we incubate these cells for another week to make sure the, the cells um, uh, lose um, uh, membrane antibody, then you can see most of cells um, now don't have um, the membrane antibody. <laughs> and the other thing we found is um, um, high level of Cree actually can create um, a cytot uh, cytotoxicity. So by using recombinant Cree, we were able to limit uh, exposure of the Cree to minimize uh, this negative effect. Then we move on into a proof of, cancer, proof of concept experiment. This is actually a screening for humeral clones. And in this case, we transfect 10 to the line choice cells. So this is cells from in vitro gene. And so this is about a one tenth of scale for a real uh, project, I would say. We typically, for real project, we start with 10 to the nine cells. And in this case, for, uh, for 10 to the eight cells, we transfect with a humeral uh, cloned into our MS expression vector, assuming one in thousand uh, efficiency of the stable integration, we actually expect a 10 to the fifth um, stable, uh, independent stable integration events. And after um, stable selection uh, with pyromycin, and then we uh, label cells with untyped C and conjugate with a FISI, and we are able to uh, use um, facts to sort out the top, say, 0.01% um, the brightest cells with a high expression level of the membrane antibody. 
Then the first question we want to ask is whether the membrane expression correlates with secretin level. I think that would be the basis of this technology. So we picked uh, seven clones, and uh, some with a high expression, uh, of, um, uh, some with a lower expression of the membrane antibody. And then we uh, characterized the produ production yield of, of the secreted antibody, and we plotted it out uh, in this plot. You can see uh, most of clones, they correlate very well. And, and except there's one interesting clone uh, actually exhibits higher intraclonal variations. And in this, this is a white type uh, of and see there's no membrane antibodies. And most of the select clones would, would have um, uh, antibodies displayed on cell surface. And this interesting uh, uh, number 18, actually you can see there's uh, about 18% cells uh, didn't have a um, membrane antibody. And because of the antibody, uh, labeled uh, um, anchored on cell surface, uh, we, we were able to um, analyze these sort of intraclonal uh, variations uh, of different clones. And then we took this top pool, top 0.1%, um, the brightest cells, we treated with Cre to switch off membrane um, anchorage. And then we sorted cells again into a 96 well plate, but this time we picked the cells without a membrane antibody. And so after a couple of weeks, um, we screened uh, 200 cl colonies, um, 200 clones, and just by uh, usual um, uh, screening and picking. And for the top five clones, uh, we uh, analyzed their production yield in uh, seven days non-fat shaking culture, uh, just using commercial media from in vitro gene. In this case, I believe uh, freestyle um, expression media for Cho. And most of clones expressed uh, more than 300 uh, mg per liter, with the top one expressing uh, 750. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll um, uh, remind you again, this is from a seven-day non-fit uh, shaking culture. And from our private experience, um, and, and this kind of yield can, uh, will probably improve three to tenfold if in bioreactors. And obviously, we we'll want to make sure these clones, um, they don't have um, membrane antibodies, uh, as shown here. So just briefly um, uh, to describe the timeline of this process, and typically a stable transfection in Cho will take two to three weeks, and then fact sorting and membrane switch will take one week, and then we clone the cells again, in, um, by sorting the cells without a membrane antibody into 96 well played, and then it'll take a couple of weeks for co colonies to grow, and then the clone screening and expansion takes another couple of weeks and one more week um, for the non-fat shaker study. So the whole process takes eight to nine weeks. And in terms of the benefit, um, I think the first of all, it's, it's much quicker. It probably save about six months um, um, in terms of the other time. And I think um, this technology, because of you're able to generate hundreds if not thousands of um, highly productive clones, um, this technology will permit um, early assessment of the product quality attributes. And I think maybe the larger benefit actually will come from by picking the right clone, you can save a lot of the um, downstream uh, complexities. Um, the other important attribute of this technology is that it's a vector base. So it can be easily adapt to any um, cell line development system. So there's no need to modify your um, already optimized expression vectors, such as you know, promoter, enhancer, poly A, and selections. The only change actually is on your expression vector. You want to insert in um, uh, this extra CH2, CH3 um, transmembrane domain exon. And it's also uh, compatible with uh, various expression uh, enhancing elements. Uh, I've listed three uh, genetic um, elements have been shown to maybe open up chromatin structure and to ensure the optimal um, expression of your gene of interest. And also uh, with, with the uh, various clone uh, screening um, uh, machineries. So in this slide, I want to summarize um, the advantage of this technology and compare it with the conventional cell line um, development method using gene application. So first of all, it's much quicker. It takes two to three months instead of, instead of six to eight, uh, to eight months. And uh, we don't rely on the gene applications, and we utilize facts as a screening method. Um, and because of that, we can assure the clonality. So you don't need a multiple round of uh, um, sub, uh, subclonings um, to make um, ensure the clonality of your clone. 
And um, this is an interesting point um, for the starting um, gene of interest positive cells. So in typical um, uh, uh, cell line development, you probably start with a million cells. Then uh, you actually expect 10 to the third uh, independent clone. And in the, uh, when you use a facts-based um, screening method, you can start almost unlimited cell number. So in, in our typical um, campaign, we would start with 10 to the 9 cells. So we would expect 10 to 6 independent um, integration event. And, uh, and also, I mentioned earlier, we're able to get you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of highly productive clones. And this would enable the early assessment or early screening of the product quality attribute. And the other thing I didn't mention is that because of we don't rely on the gene application, so all the uh, cell lines we have are isolated, are stable. And we have this uh, vision um, of a product quality attributes based cell line development. And typically, we will uh, start a very large scale stable transfection. And then by fact sorting, you isolate your um, um, the brightest cell, the high expression of the membrane antibody. And after switching off the membrane anchors, you can sort them again into 96 well place. Now you can have hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of a highly productive clone. This would allow you, actually, even at the 96 well um, stage, you will be able to purify micrograms of material. And this can, you can subject um, this material to a um, variety of uh, your favorite analytic tool to assess their product quality assessments. And we have now started to apply this IMS technology in the library screen. And obviously, you can uh, imagine if you put an antibody library on cell survey, you can do a similar screen for, say, higher affinity of ligand binding or maybe even higher bioactivities. And, and you can start with the affinity mature library or focused immune libraries or, or even de novo human, um, li uh, human antibody libraries. So we have utilized um, recombinant-mediated cassette exchange to make sure all our library members get integrated in the same uh, chromosome locus to ensure a proper uh, normalized and also very high expression level of the, all, the, uh, membrane, um, uh, all the library members. And then after fact sorting, um, you can to isolate um, the cells with the desired um, activities can be turned into pr production cells right away just by switching off membrane anchorage. And we think and this will, will allow to create a, 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 a streamlined process, uh, combined antibody discovery and cell line development into a one step three months process. And we have also applied this um, uh, AMS technology in uh, uh, foot A knockout trail cells. Um, obviously, the goal is to uh, pr production of a fucosylated antibody with enhanced ADCC activity. And we have, um, there's a couple of um, foot A knockout cell lines available. One is from Balwa um, uh, by um, homologous recombination method. One is uh, from the Sengamo by the zinc finger uh, uh, mediate uh, genome modification. So we actually utilize um, a, a CRISPR-based um, genome editing and create this uh, double allele knockout technology um, to create a pan of um, foot A knockout cells. So in, in the uh, next few minutes, I will just introduce very quickly about this technology. And CRISPR is um, so-called a bacterial immune system um, to fight against foreign DNA. So essential component um, is a nucleus. Um, in this case, shown here is the Cas9, and, which, and also a couple of uh, very small RNA. And this Cas9 RNA complex um, can be direct to a uh, specific site to, um, uh, to, to the chromosome, or to, the, to the DNA. And then the Cas9 will create, uh, cut the DNA, create a double uh, stranded break. And in the repair um, mechanism, a small number of cells, um, uh, you actually can uh, introduce these frame shift mutations by a small indel, a small insertion or deletions. And people have demonstrated um, this kind of genome editing, you'll probably get a low um, single digit uh, percentage efficiency. So the Cas9 seems to be idea um, to, if you want to uh, create a knockout, a gene knockout, in mammalian cells. And the only component you need is, um, is a Cas9 and, and the targeting RNAs. And you can easily, by uh, transfect 
yourselves transiently uh, to provide these two components. However, um, the, we have found um, the chance of our, if you only um, target one sequence, and, and the chance of a double allele on knockout is very, very low, if not um, negligible. And, and then you probably have to rely on sequential knockout to create um, um, the both allele um, modification. So we have um, hypothesized that if you um, target a multiple sequences in a single exon, uh, you might be able to enhance the efficiency to create a double allele knockout. So, in, so we use a foot aid as our model system. Um, again, in the Cho itself, um, so we have um, compared if you target uh, one target or up to 10 targets in, a sing, uh, in the um, foot aid exon, and how, uh, how efficiently you can create double knockout by a single step transient transfection. And the constellation uh, in cells actually can be very easily detected by uh, staining a cell with a fluorescence labeled uh, L LCA. And you know, white type cells, uh, if you stay uh, stain with uh, LCA, 100% cells will uh, give you a uh, stain positively. And then we uh, take these um, Cho cells and transient transfect with a number of uh, um, uh, CRISPR expression vectors targeting from one to 10 um, um, sequences. And then stain the cell again. Um, so I just want to um, point it out, so most of cells will stay um, stain positively. And only a, a small portion of cell, percent of cells will show up uh, in this M2 peak. And this peak represents the loss of the, uh, both allele of foot eight. And the uh, data is summarized in the next slide. And in this table, I can see the uh, uh, CRISPR target. Uh, uh, we compared from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7, 10. And then after transient transfection and one week of incubation, and then we checked um, percentage per of cells in the M2 peak. So for the white type cells, and, and you get a background of maybe 0.1% um, in the M2 peak. And if you target only one uh, um, uh, uh, CRISPR uh, sequence in your, um, uh, in the expression vector, then you, you get a very similar number compared to the background. If you target two, you get a little bit enhanced, um, less than, still less than 1%. If you um, use more than three, actually, you can reach to about 5% um, efficiency. So we took um, this M2 peak from this uh, transfection number three and then uh, sorted into uh, 96 well plays. And then we were able to um, pick uh, 11 uh, colonies and then bank them and bank, and bank them and confirm, they all confirm uh, negatively uh, by LCA staining. So next experiment we did is to compare these 11 clones with a white type Cho for the transient expression of GFP and uh, or the retoxin. So in the experiment with GFP, we have found most of the 11 clones show the similar transfection efficiency as the white type Cho, it's about 70%. And in the retoxin experiment, we have identified the three clones showed very similar expression level with the white type Cho. And particularly, uh, two of these clones showed very similar growth profile as the white type Cho. And then um, we have uh, confirmed um, the uh, foot eight exon to make sure indeed we have uh, um, uh, um, create um, a genome editing in the food aid exons. I'm showing you three examples here. So the first uh, mutant actually created this um, uh, uh, two base pair insertion. And the second example uh, create uh, the one base pair deletion. And the third um, example create about a 40 to 50 base pair deletion. And then um, we uh, produced um, a phycosylate retoxin or herceptin from these foot aid uh, knockout cells. And then we, uh, the purified antibody sent to uh, ESO science um, 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 for the glycan analysis by MassSpec. And their data confirmed um, that this a phycosylate antibody produced from the foot aid uh, knockout cells indeed uh, showed a complete lack of focus, while the uh, antibody produced from white type child showed uh, a robust focus present. And the lastly, uh, we compared the ADCC uh, activity of this uh, aficosal antibody, and they showed 40 to 50 fold uh, enhancement. And, and here I just want to show you the timeline of this process uh, very quick. For the, uh, we were able to generate um, panel of 
um, foot A knockout child in five weeks. And you can imagine the same process can be applied to actually any child or uh, uh, especially the antibody um, uh, production child cells. You probably want to add a couple, mo couple uh, more weeks to, to confirm the antibody production. So I think in total seven weeks, we're able to knock out foot eight into any of your antibody uh, expression cells. Uh, and then uh, obviously we have filed a patent um, to cover broad application of these uh, both technologies. And right now we're seeking a collaboration or uh, our license tech, um, opportunities for these two technologies. So in summary, I've showed, uh, or at least we think the MS is the most efficient platform technology for cell line development. It utilizes a unique a switchable cell service display of antibody and to facilitate a rapid cell line screening by fags. And we think this MS technology can be a base of a, a create a streamlined antibody discovery and cell line de development to create a one step three months process. And I've also shown you a deco technology um, uh, by multiple CRISPR targeting. Uh, we are able to knock out um, a gene in, in many cells in one step. Uh, we are able to create a panel of foot eight uh, knockout cells within five weeks. And the antibody produced from these cells um, confirmed lack of fecosylation and enhanced ADCC activities. And this technology can be applied to knock out food aid in any antibody production cells. And obviously, um, we're very interested in the applied uh, DECO to um, knock out other genes in other cells, um, particularly primary cells and uh, stem cells as well. I'm going to stop here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, we have time for one question. Any questions? Who's going to ask the question? I'll ask one. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, uh, have you Who are you? Have you What's your name? Uh, this is uh, Yong Li from Genentech. Thank you. Uh, have you analyzed uh, the high express CHO cell uh, from the uh, molecule level? So the high expression is coming from uh, like the integration into the transcription hotspot, or you need integration of the multiple copies, or both? Yeah, we, we actually, this, actually, we think our technology is particularly suited for hotspot uh, screening. So we're at the process to um, screen maybe hundreds of thousands of hotspots. And we, one of our goal actually is to catalog all the potential hotspots um, in, in the in the cell cells. So we're still in the process of doing that. Okay, thank you. With, with all this stuff in there, when you, have you got one of these into the clinic yet? Because I'm, I'm just wondering yeah. what the FDA. Right. Gonna, I mean, what are the FDA going to think about all these all these bits and bobs kicking around in these cells? Because they, they're very conservative and they like their boring old Cho vectors with their Cho lines and what have you. So, yeah, have think, you taken one to the FDA yet? No, <laughs> no. And as, as I mentioned, um, we just developed this technology. And but I think uh, with this streamlined process, it, it's funny. Um, Neil mm. mentioned earlier on. Um, uh, they have a record 15 months um, um, from the project to a uh, first in human trial. And I think with the streamlined uh, antibody discovery and cell line development, and if you're able to create a production cell lines in three months, I, we it probably have a chance to beat that record. And I don't see any difference from the antibody produced with this technology and, and, and uh, comparing to any other cell cells because it's a vector based and there's, there's no reason uh, it will behave differently. Okay, well good luck with that, thank you very much.